What is up guys? In this second lesson of Swift, we're going to be going over a few more basic elements of the syntax. And that covers pretty much the data types, constants and variables, and some other neat features that we should know about before we get into some more of the logic. So to get started, let's go ahead and specify or actually look into the difference between mutable and immutable variables. So to create a variable, as you saw in the last video, all we had to do is provide the var keyword followed by a name, such as name if you want. And this can be code palace or it can be Tom or whatever name you want. And this can be changed at any moment in the program. We can go ahead and change this to, let's say, Florian. And when we go ahead and print name, we're going to have Florian printed to the console because Florian was changed after we declared it as name. But sometimes we want to prevent the program from doing that because if we accidentally reassign the variable of name with a different name, it might actually destroy all the logic we created. So in those scenarios, we also have the let keyword. And let just tells the program that this name should not be changed on later in the program once we assign it a value. So if we go ahead and run the program, we're actually going to get an error that says cannot assign to value name. And then it will also tell us that we should also change let to var to make it mutable. So if we want this to actually work, we're going to have to remove Florian and we're going to have to run the program and it's going to work the same as before. Except this time, it is guaranteed that we cannot change it later in the program. So that was essentially the basic concept of let and var. And now let's move on to the basic data types that are in Swift. So the first data type we need to cover is the character. Let's go ahead and type in let letter. And this is going to be of type character. Next, we can go ahead and assign to this letter a value such as X or A or one or any single character letter. And then when we go ahead and print letter, you're going to notice that we're going to have the same thing be print to the console as if we were to write a string. The thing about characters is that we can only have one of them. If we add two characters and specify it as a character, the program is going to throw an error that we cannot assign a type string to a character because a character takes less space than a string and that's why it only allows us to include one letter or one character in the character data type. Next we have a string so that can be a phrase and the phrase will be set to, let's say, this is a song. So that's something very basic. And when we print the phrase, you're going to notice that we will have the string printed to the console. And this is because a string is just a combination of letters followed by these quotation marks. So you can just think about it as text, in other words. Then we have an integer. So we can go ahead and type in let number of type integer and the number will be set to the value of 10. Then when we go ahead and print this number, we're going to have 10 printed to the console. So an integer is any whole number and that can be 10, that can be minus 10, that can be minus 100, whatever whole number you can think of. But now you might be asking, what about the decimals? And there are two other data types that concentrate on handling decimals. And the first one is a float. So to specify a float, you just need to use the float keyword, or actually that's not entirely true. I didn't mention this earlier, but I should mention it now. It's better late than never. But in Swift, you don't need to explicitly mention the data type. You can go ahead and type in, let's say pi, and that's going to equal 3.14. And the compiler is going to know that this is a floating number because of the data type that we have inserted. We do not have to do this every single time. This is just to force the program to only accept that value or else throw an error. As you can see right there, I put let number float, number is going to equal minus 100, and that should effectively convert it to a decimal number, as you can see right here. But if we specify it as a float and we insert a string such as that, it's going to give us an error that we cannot assign text to a floating point number. So to go back, we can go here and we can do 3.123. And when we run the program, it will print out 3.123. With float numbers, there's a certain limit of decimals that we can go to. So if we go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and we run the program, 
it's not going to be able to go past 7 because it is not that specific. So we're going to have to actually change this to what they call a double. And double is going to actually double the amount of decimal spaces that we can include in our decimal number. So as you can see, the zero was excluded because a zero following a nine doesn't really do anything. But if we add a one after that and run the program, you're going to notice that all of the decimal places have been inserted. But if we go back to float, it's going to say it doesn't have to be that specific. So it's just going to remember these first seven decimal places. And finally, the final data type we need to cover is the Boolean. So if we go here, we can type in is connected. And this is going to be of type Boolean. Then we can go ahead and assign to is connected a value of either true or a value of false. So that just tells the program yes and no. And it's a very simple form of communicating whether something was a success or something was a failure. So for example, if we type is connected and is set to false, we can just print that there is no connection. So by printing this Boolean is connected, we're going to get the value of false returned. And if we go ahead and insert true, we're going to have true return to the console. And later on, I'm also going to be showing you how we can use these to make some very simple checks that can help us with verifying whether there's a connection or not. So that covers the basic data types that you should be aware of when working in Swift. Now I'm going to show you a few other features that you should be aware of when you are working with some of the basic features in Swift, such as if we go ahead and print a string, you're immediately going to notice that if we write the sentence such as this and we insert another pair of quotation mark and say word is bad, the compiler is not going to understand what this is because it's going to think that we have this as a string and this as a string and this in the middle is just something random. So there's actually a way to fix this and they call this an escape. So by appending a backslash in front of the quotation mark that you want to escape, you can actually tell the program that it is part of the text. It just escapes its original functionality and turns it into normal text. So now if we go ahead and run the program, it's going to say this word is bad. And the escape can actually be used for other things as well such as if you want to create a new line, you do slash n and slash n is just going to put the text one line down. So anything that is after this will be inserted on a new line. And finally, sometimes you're going to end up trying to backslash something that you shouldn't. So if you just want to insert a normal backslash such as that, we can go backslash backslash and it's just going to insert a backslash. As you can see right there, we only have one backslash. And if we add a backslash backslash n, we should end up with only backslash n without it actually being used as a backslash n for a new line. So this is stuff to consider when you're printing a string. Something else I want to show you that's pretty cool is how to create a multi-line string. And to do this, we can go ahead and type in var sentence, and that's going to equal triple quotation marks like this. And then you need to start a new line. We can type in, hello, this is text that will not be formatted. And when we run this, you're going to notice, ah, we actually have to print it, of course. So print sentence. So when we run this, you're going to notice that it's going to keep the text exactly as we specified it in this kind of poem setting. So that's something also to consider if you want to write something to the console, it's going to look a lot nicer and it's a lot easier to create because you can see it right in front of you. But that's actually all I wanted to cover today in this Swift tutorial. In the next video, we're going to be jumping into some more concepts but as always, guys, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.